What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How are you doing today? I hope you're excited because the Sport Card Expo is just around the corner, and because of that, I thought it'd be fun to go over my top five favorite things to do before heading to the Sport Card Expo in Toronto this coming weekend. This video is going to be focused towards both new people that have never attended the expo and what to expect when you get to the expo, as well as people that have been going to the expo and want to overall improve their experience. Just some tips on how to overall improve your expo time. All right, real quick before we get into if you guys are brand new to the channel make sure you subscribe because we will be having lots of sport card expo content coming out right after the expo is over so if you want to catch those videos make sure you subscribe to the channel here is footage from last expo some of the great cards we'll be seeing this weekend i mostly focus on hockey but there's all sports pokemon and as well as those other uh trading card games that i'm not too familiar with but i do know there is a huge market for those and yeah make sure you drop a like on this video if you enjoy comment down below any tips you might have for people attending this weekend's sport card expo and yeah make sure you follow us on instagram at our sports cards without further ado let's get into five prep tips i have for you guys before heading to this year's sport card expo all right my number one tip for you guys is to have a plan slash a budget before attending the expo and this is strictly because this show is so large it's expanded even more i think it's expanded another two halls uh since last expo and this is i'm telling you guys this is the biggest hockey card show probably in the world so if you're going for hockey cards make sure you have a plan uh what i would suggest is also setting yourself a budget because it'd be very easy to walk in see something you like buy it and all of a sudden you're spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars like crazy i'd recommend setting a budget but obviously do as you wish you don't have to you're your own person uh and if your expo plans are going to revolve around the autograph pavilion if you're going to be getting autographs for those big names uh, the names aren't too crazy this time around i think dennis rodman's probably the biggest name for example if you're getting a dennis rodman autograph at this weekend you're going to want to make sure you get there early because your day is probably going to be spent mostly at the autograph pavilion waiting to meet uh dennis rodman and whoever else will be the big names at the expo this time around i think i got to the to meet arbor jack guy uh, i got there roughly half an hour early and i was in the fast lane so i got there pretty quick in and out maybe about 40 minutes in total but if you get there late uh i probably would have been waiting like at least an hour and the expo is not that long so uh make sure you're to the autograph pavilion early you could definitely hammer out the expo in just one day i've done it before but if you're gonna be getting something signed i definitely recommend going two days because that is going to take up a large portion of your day all right my next tip for you guys is going to be to do a full lap of the show now this is something i do at every card show and it's a lot harder to do at the expo because the show is so big but i definitely recommend walking around to almost all the tables or at least a big majority of them before you really make a decision on what you're going to purchase because that way you can get a good gauge of the market some guys may have a card price higher than some other guys and so on uh honestly it's really tempting to walk in see a card you like buy it right away but what happens if you go to the next table and that card's 20 dollars cheaper that's just something in general i like to do i like to completely see everything before i make a decision now obviously if there's something really like niche that you're looking for and you find it maybe you jump on it it also depends how like high demand the card is if it's something you think is going to be sitting there for a while maybe come back to it and see if anyone else has it for cheaper sort of thing so yeah basically i like to walk around at least the main room before i make any purchases unless something really catches my eye my next tip is gonna be there's not just vendors and what i mean by that is you don't have to strictly buy off the vendors at these shows you can go up to someone random with a case and say hey what do you got in there do you collect uh whatever sport you're looking for do you collect football do you collect hockey and they could show you their hockey cards you can make a trade you, they could buy some cards off you they can sell your cards to you you don't have to strictly deal with the vendors you can deal with other people attending the show and that's why i love this show you can also attend the trade night definitely recommend that because people attending the show are more likely to give you a break or more likely to do a trade with you because people setting up at these shows are trying to make money they're there for a reason they have to pay to be there uh the gate to entry for attendees is a lot lower than it is to set up there. You don't have as much time invested. It's a lot easier to make trades, I find, with people at the show. Now, there's a risk to that. Obviously, you got to watch out for fakes. You got to watch out for con artists uh, because they are not re as reliable as the vendors. Just be careful when dealing with other people attending the show. I've personally never had any issues uh, dealing with another guest at the show, but just be careful. The next tip is going to be tip number four. It's going to be price out your cards if you plan on selling or trading any of your cards. 
cards in advance. As you can see here, I got my Austin Matthews PSA 9 Young Guns. Got a price of $7.95 on it. That is actually from a previous card show that I was set up as. That video will be coming out eventually. This just makes it so when you're dealing with other people at the show uh, that you have a price already in mind. Now, how I did it is I put these little stickers. Make sure they're on like a sleeve or something. Do not put them. Do, do not put them straight onto a slab or straight onto a top loader. Make sure there's a sleeve on them if you're going to do what I do. The reason I do this, though, is because I set up at card shows. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you don't. Uh, I definitely recommend just putting it in your phone under, like, the notes app. Uh, like, Austin Matthews, PSA 9 Young Guns, uh, the lowest take for it, 750 for example. Something like that. Just in case someone's looking through your case or whatever, and they pull out a card and they ask you right away how much you want for this, you can give them a firm answer. Then they know what to work with, what you're looking for, and right away you can get a deal done quick. Because like I've said before in this video, there's not a lot of time at this work card expo, especially if you're going for only one day. I make sure I price out almost all my cards I'll be bringing. Uh, I've, I have had it before where I'm at the expo trade night and we didn't get a deal done because he didn't really know what he wanted for his cards uh so that is unfortunate when that happens so basically just be prepared know what you want for the cards you're trying to move and the last tip of this video tip number five is going to be strictly guys have fun at the expo i know the expo at times can seem stressful and overwhelming because it's such a big venue there's so many people there's so much stuff to see remember to have fun uh for example i've been at the expo and i've been at a table and some vendors get snarly or they're grumpy for whatever reason maybe uh they're not selling as much as they want uh just remember you can always walk away you're there to enjoy your time just because someone else isn't having a good time doesn't mean they have to ruin your good time if a vendor is being hard on you on the price uh just walk away there's loads of tables at the, at these shows and yeah you don't have to put up with anybody's crap that's just more for first time sport card expo uh attendees uh than people that are experienced because people that are experienced they know that not everyone's going to want to buy their cards. Not everyone's going to want to trade away stuff. They're there mainly to sell. So vendors in particular, a lot of vendors won't want to buy your cards. That's just straight up. That's why I definitely recommend interacting with some of the guests. One last bonus tip. If you are interested in selling cards at the expo, uh, I definitely recommend attending the trade night. I think it's the Saturday night. There's a trade night. I think there might be one Friday as well. I'm not sure, but I'll definitely be at the Saturday one uh, because that's that's where people go to trade and buy and sell and it's not just the vendors who pay to be there so yeah guys i think that's pretty much it that will just about do it for this video uh let me know in the comments below if you guys can think of any other tips heading into this year's sport card expo or i guess there's two a year so this season's sport card expo uh if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe because we will be having lots of sport card expo content coming up in the future drop a like on this video if you enjoyed thank you all so much for watching today's video take care everybody have a good one